right. Let's do a vlog. Haven't done one of these in forever. So I'm sure this won't surprise you to hear at all, but this entire video idea was entirely a shower thought. Hey everybody, Madry Bread here. Uh, sorry if I look a little bit disheveled. I guess we probably all look pretty disheveled during these times. Uh, we all know what, what we're talking about when we say these times, even if YouTube demonetizes the word. I guess I'll just call it the plague. The outbreak. The great quarantine. I like that name for it. So, people ask me all the time about all kinds of stuff on what it's like being a full-time YouTuber, because I've done it for like a really long time now. Although a lot of people would have just been introduced to me recently, because I just got, you know, I, I blew up in popularity fairly recently. Uh, I still have like 61,000 subscribers before that, and so I've kind of just been around forever, met a lot of people, done a lot of stuff. In, on YouTube. I've done a video a day for about nine years now for anyone who's just finding me and just wants to learn a bit about behind the scenes working with YouTube. But this is my full-time job. It has been for a very long time and I love doing it. Um, so a little bit about who I am. I'm a dry bread. I'm some guy living up in Canada who just makes videos all day. I've been doing a minimum of one video a day for the last nine years. And I've been doing videos in general since I was like um, 14 or 15 in Comtech class back in high school. I'm 27 years old now. Uh, so I've been doing this since before I was even on YouTube. I've been making videos. It's just what I love to do. And whenever I talk candidly on something like Twitter about stuff that YouTubers usually don't talk about, like money and stuff, but people ask about all the time, People always wonder, like, why do YouTubers not answer this stuff? And honestly, I, I guess the answer is different for every single person, but usually the answer is just they don't want to because they don't like all the questions that they'll get, usually. Uh, you know, th there's the snarky comments of not a real job and whatever, and eh. but there's also, I don't know, people don't like talking about money. People don't like talking about a lot of stuff, but I'm kind of just a really open guy. And so I always talk about this stuff. So especially when I talk about money, you guys are really interested. But what I thought would be a really interesting topic of conversation, just because I feel like I have a lot to say about it, is my recent Pokemon Stadium Let's Play. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know me or anything, you've just come in to learn a bit about YouTubers, that sounds like the most boring sentence you've ever heard in your entire life. Let's listen to this stranger talk about his dumb Let's Play. Now, let me assure you, Okay, it is still stupid. However, you might learn something interesting out of it. So I've written down a whole bunch of points here that I want to hit on of different things that I could talk about in the decision to make this Let's Play. And maybe it'll give you a little bit of an idea on some of the decision making that can go into a channel, decision making that goes into my channel specifically, just because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty unique in how I run my YouTube channel from a lot of people. I'm I'm very old school, and that is kind of my creative jump dumping ground rather than some kind of really uh, put together business idea, you know? And I just wanted to talk to you about all of that, and we'll just see where this topic goes. So what made me, Wargeek, and Gooset decide to play Pokemon Stadium? I'm just going to always call Gooset uh, Brandon because he's been my friend since high school and it's weird to not just call him Brandon But what a geek I've always called what a geek some youtubers call each other by their name some use their username is kind of just different for everyone YouTube is a weird place like that. It's like it's like pro wrestling You know some wrestlers call each other by their ring name and some people call each other by their real name. It's just It's, it, it's how it works when it's a it's theater, you know people are people are acting in some way They're playing a character in some way Although, none of the three of us are playing characters. We're just, you know, this is just how we are. We just have our online names. So what made us want to play Pokemon Stadium? Okay, well, there's three main thoughts that I broke this down into. The first one, and I, I came to them with the idea, and they liked it right away. We all grew up with the N64 in some place in our life. Uh, Brandon had one, I had one, What Geek's friend had one, so he played it growing up at, like, a friend's place and stuff. But we all, we all like playing games together, obviously. We've all been friends for, uh, God, uh, with What Geek, I think I've been friends with him for like 10 years. With Brandon, it's probably more like 12 or 13 now, something like that. Um, so obviously we just want to play goofy old N64 games together. You know, the mini games in Pokemon Stadium are really fun. And when it comes to the battles, we decide that, you know, between the three of us, we, we're probably pretty good at the game. You know, I have a lot of hours on Pokemon now because of my Pokemon challenges. For anyone who doesn't know, the thing that I blew up on was 
beating a Pokemon game once a week with a some kind of ridiculously hard stipulation, you know? No items in battle using some really crap Pokemon. Uh, it's a fun sideshow for me, but I'm primarily a Let's Player, I'd consider myself, even if it's the least popular thing I do. It's, it's what I love the most. It'll always be there. So... Uh, the first thing is just it would be really fun. It would be me hanging out with my friends and doing a fun series, which is what the channel's always been about. It's always been about me playing fun things with my friends. Consideration number two is that it would promote my friends Brandon and What a Geek really, really well. So What a Geek revises all my scripts for my Pokemon challenges. I've talked about that in those videos before, actually. That uh, he revises them. Usually if he sees something that I worded really poorly in a description of a battle and is very confusing or something like that, he'll help me touch that up and make it easier to understand. Uh, sometimes he will point out typos, and sometimes he doesn't. Uh, and sometimes he'll even point out a typo, and he says, there's a typo here, but leave it, it's hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> this always leads to very funny moments when I'm recording the audio, but um, it would promote What a Geek very well, because we do Pokemon Randomizer Let's Plays over on his channel, and people ask me to do randomizers a lot, those are over on his channel. It's both of us playing. We both have different games in the same uh, gen that are re-randomized different ways, so our games aren't the same. People seem to really like that, so it would promote his channel. It would also promote Brandon's channel because he started doing challenges recently. He did a little bit when I started. He thought it was a fun thing. He stopped for a while. He came back to it, and he does challenges in multiple games now. And although What a Geek and Brandon have never been full-time YouTubers, they've always dabbled in YouTube here and there, mostly What a Geek more than Brandon. Brandon started a lot of little streams and channels over the years. But, you know, the main thing is I, I do this stuff with them because they're my friends, and we have this really great dynamic. The viewers always say that they really like the three of us together. As much as I've had many, many friends on the show, and we all have our own dynamics, and they're all wonderful in their own way, uh, the fan favorite definitely has always been either me and Brandon, me and what a geek or the three of us each one of those combos has a different dynamic and people really seem to like those so people when i when i floated the idea on twitter of hey do you want me to do pokemon stadium they were all immediately saying you got to do it with brandon and what a geek and i agree i it's uh it just wouldn't be the same without the three of us you know that's we were the pokemon platinum team that did that let's play back in the day and a lot of people are rediscovering that all these years later now and really enjoying that, and so I appreciate that. The third and final main consideration that went into it, that it would be a great way to get people who found my channel through Pokemon to try out the other videos. Normally, I wouldn't care too much about that, because although obviously I want my videos to do well, and obviously the videos that I'm laughing the most in, my Let's Play videos, are the ones that I want people to be enjoying the most because they're the ones that I enjoy the most. That's natural. I still enjoy Pokemon challenges a lot. You'd hear me laughing during them, even if there's frustrating parts. But, you know, I, I wouldn't make them if I didn't have a fun time making them. It's as simple as that. That's kind of how I've always been on YouTube, because I'm way too stubborn. But it, it would be a great way to get people to watch the Let's Play videos, because if you came in from Pokemon, you only know me from Pokemon, then there's two questions I have to be able to ask myself. One, would you enjoy the Let's Plays? And two... Could I get you to watch the Let's Plays? And if the answer to both of those or either of those are no, then I shouldn't even bother asking you. But the way I looked at it is that I read the comments. I, I read the comments all the time. I read the comments on my Let's Play videos of the games that have nothing to do with Pokemon. And all the time I get comments from people just saying, I'm so glad I checked out your Let's Plays. They're my favorite thing on your channel now. I get that all the time. And it's really heartwarming to me because, like, I appreciate that you guys like it so much, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's mildly frustrating because it's like, when people see it, they love it, but the view count is still so low compared to everything else. Now, I'm not too sad because the Let's Plays still get five times more views than they used to before I blew up. And so, so many new people are enjoying that stuff that I really enjoy, and so... Uh, am I sad about it? No, not even remotely. That's awesome. Uh, I love that so many more people are watching it. It doesn't really matter that much if it's a small number compared to the Pokemon challenges, but what's important to me is that the people who have checked out the Let's Plays told me they love it. So the vocal people, at least, say that they love it, and the like-to-dislike ratio is very, very good, and the audience retention is very, very good. So the metrics are telling me people are watching it, and they're watching the whole thing, 
and anyone who gives it a chance has a very high likelihood of liking it. So that tells me, okay, the problem is that I need to get it in front of people's eyes. And there's where the third consideration comes in. If people came in from Pokemon because they enjoy the Pokemon challenges, and they would probably, at least a good portion of them, would probably like the Let's Plays if they gave it a chance, how do I make them want to give it a chance? Because I'm not gonna just say, do it, because it's your own free time, you can make your own decision. How do I make it so interesting to you that you wanna choose to watch that? And I decided, oh, let's play Pokemon Stadium. It's totally different from any of the other Pokemon stuff that I've done. It's got the dynamic of me, Brandon, and What a Geek, which is the appeal of a lot of our Let's Plays, such as Nancy True Shadow at Water's Edge. L.A. Noir was me and Brandon. Deadly Premonition was me and What a Geek. Nancy Drew was me, What a Geek, and Brandon. Like, these are some of the best Let's Plays that we did in 2019. And it's those dynamics. So let's get people uh, to see that, because that's what they tell me that they love so much on the Let's Plays that they do check out. So it'll be Pokemon, so that they check it out. We'll all have fun doing it, because there's three friends hanging out and playing Pokemon Stadium, and that just sounds like a fun time. It will give insight into the kind of planning that goes into a Pokemon battle, at least for me and for What a Geek, because he reviews my scripts and sometimes I ask him for advice on this stuff. And overall, people just get to see what the appeal of the Let's Plays are. And it was a massive success, because when I put it up, uh, I think the first two parts are at like 65,000 views. It is the most successful Let's Play in terms of viewership that I've ever put up in the entire history of the channel in terms of the first month. I have some Let's Plays that have more views, grand total. However, those have been up for years. That's very, very different. This has been up for, at the time that I'm recording this, less than a month. And it's doing that well. And so I want to thank each and every one of you very, very much for that, because uh, that is a massive, massive accomplishment to me, considering one of my goals that I humbly set for before I become 28 years old is to have my average view count on my Let's Plays be 5,000 or higher. Now, I don't know if I consider Pokemon Stadium as my average Let's Play. It brings the average up, sure. But I don't think I'm going to count that one just because, you know, it's a bit of a special circumstance. So those are the things that went into that. Wanting to wanting to promote my friends and do something good for them. Wanting to have a fun time hanging out with my friends. And wanting to see if you guys like the Let's Plays by giving you one that maybe you'd be more interested in. And if you, none of you carry on and watch other Let's Plays, that's perfectly okay. I've seen a lot of comments from you guys saying that you got into it this way, which is incredibly flattering, and I, I really appreciate that. Especially, I, I had a few people DM me and just say that they've gotten back together with, like, their old siblings and stuff to play Pokemon Stadium because they had so much fun watching us play the, the minigame specifically. Uh, that's incredibly heartwarming to me. I, I thought that was awesome. But the other thing, as a full-time YouTuber, that goes into this kind of thing is, you know, that's the initial ideas. So basically, after those three things, I decided, yeah, I'm doing this. Usually, I'll just decide it at this will be a lot of fun. I, I have a lot, of plays, a lot of Let's Plays I've done entirely just for us of this would be a lot of fun to do. And if we're having fun with it, people will have fun watching. Even if that is like the worst thing you can do in terms of um, gaining views, it's never really been about that for me. Obviously, I want to do well. Obviously, I want to be financially successful. Obviously, I want to grow. But the most important thing is that we're having fun and that it's my creative outlet, you know? It's my job, but it's my creative outlet. Maybe that's like a weird old school artisan's way of looking at a YouTube channel, looking at it like this is my workshop and these are the things that I've created and these are my pieces of work that I will, I will sell to people. And that I, I will make what I want to make and people will pick the price that they want to. That's kind of my way of looking at it is if this isn't financially successful, that is okay because I'm doing what I love. Um, but then again, then again, I didn't grow up with the most money in the world anyway, so it, it's not like I knew what I was missing. Uh, so let's talk about finances now because everyone always wants to ask me about money when it comes to YouTube because most YouTubers won't answer that. And I'm actually really comfortable with answering that stuff because I've never really been afraid of of talking about money. I guess it's because it was something out of reach for me almost my entire life until very recently when now I'm I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, but it's 
So it, I'm just more comfortable talking about it the most, I guess. So I've wrote down a few, uh, written down a few notes here on what to talk about on it, on what you might find interesting. So just give me a second to refresh my memory. These were all shower thoughts after all. So the financial consideration of a series is something that you really only take into account if you are doing this full time and you think that the money for that series matters. So maybe you're not in a great financial position, but you could be with the series if you believe it takes off the way that you think it will. Or even if you don't particularly care about the money, however, you are absolutely convinced this series is gonna take off and thus money is going to be a natural result. And so, so you gotta figure out what you do with that. You know, how much do you think you're gonna get? Are you gonna reinvest in the show with that? Or is that for your bills? You know, stuff like that. Like, you can tell I have kind of a fancy setup, I'm sure, for my audio and, and all that stuff. And I'm not on a DSLR camera right now, but I've been working on that setup right now. Uh, but I don't know if being on a DSLR camera is a great idea. Yeah, HD camera. I look like the mixture between a fantasy dwarf and like a goblin, and neither of those are one of the more attractive fantasy creatures. So I'm not entirely sure you guys need to be seeing me in HD, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess you're seeing me on like a... 4k webcam but it's not come on it's not real 4k you know not that you guys need my face in 4k but you know i dslr cameras look better it's got like the the nice autofocus and all that crap anyway uh i knew this series would do well obviously this series would do well obviously pokemon does really well on my channel and so uh i knew it would do well and so i had to put some serious financial thought into it the reason that i had to put really serious financial thought into it is for figuring out when do I air this? I could sit on this as long as I want to, obviously. There's there's no reason not to. Um, it, it's one of those things of, I decided to start airing it like a week after I recorded, I think, like really fast. I didn't really stockpile any. I knew I'd have time to record with the guys because of the outbreak. Um, so like, you know, Brandon is off work from the military right now, although he's on call. Um, the Canadian military and, uh, and what a geek isn't working right now, this whole outbreak and everything, a lot of people aren't working right now. And so I'm working extra. Why am I working extra? Money's down on YouTube a lot. Uh, and so although I already work a ridiculous amount, I think it's extra important that I really, really, really put my all into it right now. And the reason for that is because my pay is down about 50%. Don't go to my Patreon. When I brought this up on Twitter, even though I told you guys unsub from me on Patreon, some people went to my Patreon. The reason I said unsub from Patreon is because I've been telling everybody I'm okay. I banked like all my money. I was like a poor kid. So I, I don't know what to do with money. So I literally just banked almost every dollar I got after like upgrading this place and getting a nice little home. Uh, and so I have tons of money banked to ride me through whatever this is. The reason that I told you to all unpledge from me is unpledge from me and go pledge to a smaller YouTuber who you also really enjoy because they need the money more than I do. I'll be okay. Yeah, my pay is cut in half, but like every YouTuber's pay is cut in half. And that's after the boost in views they've gotten. A lot of people won't tell you this. Everybody's number and how much their pay got cut is a little different, but it seems like Pokemon people are getting hit about 50%. And that's around where I am and where the people that I've already talked to about this privately are. I'm not going to say names. Uh, I'm just going to talk about my own financial situation and tell you that some YouTubers have privately told me the number is about 50% for them too. So a lot of people have been wondering, why would YouTubers get paid less? Like, there's so many more people watching YouTube right now because everyone's at home and has nothing better to do. Um, the reason for that is this is an economic thing on the side of YouTube that a lot of people might not think about because a lot of people don't know how YouTube literally functions financially uh, because it's just not relevant to a lot of people's lives. You know, you, you generally understand the business model of a plumber is they, they get called in through some company that represents them to fix a plumbing issue and they get paid for every plumbing issue they fixed. It's probably something along those lines. And I'm sure there's a lot of eccentricities to it and it can be different on different case by case. YouTube is not the kind of job that you see every day. It's, it's a weird job. And so here's how it works. You click on a YouTube video and if you don't have ad block on, there's an advertisement. Well, if you didn't have ad block on, then that YouTuber gets paid for that advertisement. If you did have it on, they don't get paid for that. Uh, but don't feel particularly guilty about it because almost every YouTuber I've ever talked to also uses ad block because ads are really annoying. Um, 
And so it, it's one of those weird things where no one blames you for doing it, but it does kind of suck because, yeah, we get paid less for it. But those YouTube advertisements are paid for, obviously. Basically, a company will have paid to get their advertisement on YouTube as a platform. They will have opted into what kind of video they want to be on in some degree. They, they have some granularity of it. Like, do we want to have, let's, let's say we're Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola comes to YouTube and says, we want Coke ads on videos on YouTube. We'll pay you this amount of money and we'll have this many ads run over this many months. It'll get roughly this many views, whatever. And they're going to pay that kind of money for it. That money gets divvied up to all the channels that run those Coke ads. Now, the YouTubers don't control if they get a Coke ad or not. That's controlled by YouTube. You know, Coca-Cola might say, hey, we don't want our Coke ad to be on anything controversial. We don't want anything violent. We don't want it to be on anything with swearing even. And so the more brand safe you are, you know, the more squeaky clean you are, the higher paying advertisements you'll get because you'll get the pickier advertisements and the pickier advertisements are the more expensive advertisements. Um, whereas, you know, if if I were all day talking about really, 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 really controversial political stuff all day, then, uh, you know, my advertisements would be worth so, so, so much less. Um, so, you know, Pokemon YouTube is one of the higher paying ends of YouTube just because it's considered safe. It's, it's people talking about what is supposed to be a kid's game. You know, it's aimed at kids, but it's good for everyone. I think Pokemon's just an awesome series. Um, it's, it's just a really good series of RPGs. They're solid. So if even the Pokemon people are getting hit really hard and they're too polite to tell you, uh, then it's, it's pretty bad across YouTube right now. And so that's why I had to take some consideration of when do I release this? Because if I release this during this outbreak, I'm going to be missing out on serious money. Now, when I say I'm missing out on serious money right now, I mean by doing the series when I'm doing it right now, I'm missing out $7,000 to $10,000 is what I'm going to predict um, of American money. I'm Canadian, so it's, it's worth more to me, but... 7,000 to 10,000 American dollars is my personal estimate for the amount of money that I am not getting right, that by the end of this Let's Play, I would make seven to 10,000 more dollars if I started uploading this Let's Play when it is not during this outbreak. That's the best way that I can word it. That bums me out, not necessarily because I need the money, but for two things. One thing, and I haven't told Brandon or What Geek this, but I don't think they're, I don't know if they're going to watch this anyway, because I'm sure they have better shit to do, and I'm recording with them later anyway. But what I wanted to do is if this series ended up doing really well, I wanted to just start paying them, because I've never paid them before. It's always just been friends hang, having fun, and there's always that weirdness of when you start getting money involved with your friends, but I've always been really good about that, where I just don't hold debts and grudges and stuff, and they're not expecting pay anyway. We're all doing just doing it because we're friends having fun. But what I want to start doing is I wanted to look at how much money I was making from the Let's Play every month and just try and figure out a fair amount that I could just start giving them as just like, thank you for all these years of like coming on my dumb show and putting aside your, your life obligations for this shit. Because it's just us goofing around and having fun. But at the same time, I want them to feel like it was worth their time beyond just having fun, because I, I know that everybody needs money right now. And I've also been going to, you know, friends and family and just reminding them that uh, I do have money banked and that if something happens with them, uh, that they, they can they can message me, no questions asked, and I will I will try my absolute best to help them ride through this. I don't want them financially suffering because I have had a lot of friends lose their jobs from this. And that um, and, and basically just that I you're not going to owe me anything. I just want to make sure you're doing OK. Uh, I think that's the right thing to do. I think that's the moral thing to do. And I, I, I think that anyone in my position would probably do the same thing. And so it was a really hard decision for me to decide to release this when I did, because I understand it would be worth less money. However, during this outbreak is when the money is most important and the money is down the most. You know, January is, is historically the lowest paying month on YouTube because advertisers will pay less because they know People aren't spending as much money on the products they see on advertisements in January because in January, people are broke. They just spent all their money at Christmas and at Hanukkah and all of the, you know, late winter, end of year, beginning of new year uh, events of which every culture is loaded with those. The fact that 
my my worst day in all of January is worth less money right now than my best day during this outbreak, that's how you know things are bad. This is unprecedented on YouTube. As far as I can remember, it's never been this bad. It'll recover as the world recovers, but the world economy's taking a dip. You know, a lot of people aren't working. A lot of people aren't aren't making money. A lot of people aren't willing to spend money and circulate money. Things are bad right now, so I understand. It's that's that's just going to happen to everyone. That's not a me thing. I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I've got it better than most people. But at the end of the day, what made me decide that uh, I that I should do this now? You know, uh, I I checked recently. Like my average Pokemon Stadium video makes me fifty bucks, and it's a lot more than fifty bucks worth of work. I'd make a lot more money if I spent all that time on Pokemon challenges, but I I don't because I. Maybe I'm stubborn. Maybe it's an integrity integrity thing of me, but uh, I never want the show to lose what it's about, which is a bunch of friends hanging out and having fun, uh, and predominantly me just messing around and doing what I want to do and having fun with it and taking you guys along for the ride. Because um, I won't give up what the show's always been around, uh, about, even if even if a lot of those old people, you know, a lot of them are still around and they're incredibly proud and they grew up with me watching me for all these years and. I remember all their usernames and I, I talk to them all the time and it just feels right. But, um, you know, the old people and the new people, neither one matters more than the other. I'm not going to go ditching the old stuff just because there's less of the old people watching it. And a lot of new people are watching it too. And it means a lot to me. And that's that's the most important part when it comes to my channel is that it means a lot to me. Um, so why did I decide to do the Pokemon Stadium Let's play ultimately right, ultimately right now. Uh, I literally haven't talked about the outbreak at all outside of this video and joking about it a little on some very casual Mountain Blade streams because everyone keeps talking about it nonstop. And I... It's like with politics. I used to talk about politics a little bit and I regret that because my opinions have changed a little bit over the years and they've become more nuanced and... um. But, but the main thing is, like, you can't escape politics nowadays. It, it really is everywhere. And, man, how frustrating is that? That's so the antithesis of old internet. And I love old internet. I love that people can come to my show and they hear us joking about stuff that maybe it's a little taboo to joke about now. Maybe it's a little dark now because people are a little bit more sensitive online now. Uh, but we kind of just still treat it like it's 2007. And I kind of like that. And a lot of people seem to like that. We're a, We're a little bit of a throwback that way. I'm rambling, but this is kind of what I do. The important thing is that people need to smile. Everyone's talking about the outbreak. Everyone's talking about politics. Everyone's talking about stuff that makes them miserable all day. Everyone says that Twitter's not fun. No, Twitter's as fun as you want it to be. Follow the people who make you, who make your timeline fun. Don't follow people who constantly make you upset when you check Twitter. Things can be as fun as you want them to be. I'm super politically active. I'm a very passionate guy and I have strong political opinions, but I don't judge other people for the different political opinions because I don't think I have all the answers and everything. And I, I don't want to shove this, shove this outbreak stuff down your throat all the time. You're already thinking about it. Come on. You came to my show because you want some escapism. I thought it was really important that I put up a series that I knew that people would like because people really, really need to smile right now. I was even just tweeting the other day and maybe this is part of what spurred on me actually doing a vlog explaining this. I tweeted the other day saying like, I'm getting close to 300,000 subscribers and that that feels like a very big number to me, but I feel kind of bad if I were to celebrate it right now. It, it just feels so inappropriate and like it doesn't matter at all in the grander scheme of things right now. And the nearly unanimous response from dozens of people on that tweet was, Dude, celebrate. You worked so hard for a decade to get this. You need to celebrate. And I... Part of me... I, I didn't get it at first until I saw a bunch of people say it and, they, and a lot of people explain their thought processes and a lot of it is like, if there's any time we need to smile and laugh, it's right now. And I'm like, yeah. Because I kind of had that thought in the back of my head too. Just not about that. It was about the Pokemon Stadium thing. And hearing people say it about this other thing and me realizing, oh, these two things are stem stemming from the same thought process. Like, I, I totally know what these people are talking about. I, I get it. That really made me just want to talk about it. I hope this wasn't like a 
depressing or sad video in any way. Uh, it's not at all meant to be. I'm not sad. Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, it just feels weird, I guess, saying that uh, giving up on a lot of money um, is obviously a really bad business decision, and the money could go to helping a lot of people. But the way I look at it is I think I have enough to help everyone who's going to come to me. And so I, I don't mean that like every viewer can come to me and ask for help, obviously, because I'm not a wealthy man. I don't have that kind of money. I'm, I'm just extending this to friends and family, and I'm very sorry that I'm not a wealthy enough person to extend that to more of you. Trust me, if I was one of these really big YouTubers who was like a millionaire, I would be extending that to you guys. But the unfortunate thing is I don't have that kind of money. Um, I, I have comfortable money now, but it's only enough that I can take care of a handful of people. And if I try to spread myself too thin, I know that all that's going to do is make my family suffer and make all of them who are relying on me not get the help that they thought they were going to get. So I'm really sorry about that. But um, I don't know. Maybe we can do some kind of fundraiser or something at some point. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I've been, I've been thinking a lot about and trying to think if there's something appropriate and helpful that I could do because I frankly don't know the answer to that question. Um, so, uh, I think that the decision I made is probably the, the right one. I think that there's no easy decision to make in that. Um, but I, I think in the end it was a smart idea. Because I, I read the comments and I see how happy you guys seem to be and I see that the viewer retention is really good so you guys are watching the whole thing. You guys seem to be enjoying it. The vocal people are 95% overwhelmingly positive. People are joking around. People aren't taking it too seriously. People seem to just be having fun and God, I miss that. And so those are the decisions for me as a full-time YouTuber that went into making that let's play and why I'm releasing it during a global pandemic. I, <laughs> one, one that is uh, the, the, the worst global event that has probably happened in my, my young lifetime. Although I feel really old. You know, my favorite dessert is vanilla ice cream and carrot cake. Is that the most old man you've, thing you've ever heard? This morning I had hash browns. My last meal of the day when I'm trying to stay lean, usually some oatmeal with a little bit of cream in it. I am the most old man person you've ever met. It's beautiful. I absolutely adore it. I also just noticed I'm drinking uh, coffee out of a cup that says Mr. on it. There's something, there's something funny to that. Something funny about that to me right now. My, my Mr. mug is just a huge mug. And it's really stable and sturdy with a big grip, so I like it. I can carry a lot of a lot of coffee or tea in this. I want to know what you guys think about everything I said. Keep in mind that, God, I should have said this at the beginning. Comments have an edit function now. I know some people don't know about that. So if you want, you can just keep like editing as you go and adding more thoughts on it. Because I will be reading the comments. I always read the comments. I don't see every single comment, obviously. There's a lot. But I, I try my best on a new video to spend a couple afternoons where I just spend like a half an hour to an hour scrolling, reading, replying, liking, stuff like that. Just letting people know, hey, I'm here, I'm reading, and I care. Um, so I'll, obviously, I'll be reading it for this vlog. I'm probably going to try my best to upload this right before I go to record today so that when I'm done recording, I can come back and read all your guys' comments. This is going to be recorded and edited and uploaded the same day. Uh, so. You're, you are seeing me from probably a few hours in the past. Um, so I, it's recent in terms of, if you're watching this when it came out, in terms of everything going on. Um, I hope you found this interesting. If you guys want to see me do more videos in this series where I talk about other things YouTube-related candidly, let me know. Maybe I should be streaming these things, like a Q&A session, like a live Q&A. I don't know. Give me topics if you think this is the thing that you'd be interested in. Just asking a full-time YouTuber about anything involving the job or my feelings on it or just, just anything. And I'll give you my perspective and I will try my best to get a few perspectives from other YouTubers because obviously I'm friends with a lot of YouTubers uh, just because 
that naturally happens when you do this for so long. Uh, I'll try to get second opinions for, for you and everything and really just try and help you learn about this thing that you must be interested in if you're clicking on this, you know? Um, as for final thoughts for this video, uh, if you want to watch some Let's Plays on the channel, if this piqued your interest, people all the time ask me, hey, I finished a series, or hey, I want to get into the Let's Play, what do you recommend? If you want a super goofy fun time, Nancy Drew Shadow at Water's Edge, that's me, Brandon, and a what a geek, goofing off, having a blast with a surprisingly fun and yet kind of funny and bad in some ways point-and-click adventure game. Uh, you can watch L.A. Noir if you want me and Brandon playing just a classic awesome game, making a whole lot of our favorite show jokes and everything and goofing around. You can watch Deadly Premonition with me and What Geek, where it's my favorite game of all time. Uh... Uh, it's often, it's kind of tied in second place with uh, Evil Genius. They flip-flopped a little bit between Evil Genius and Deadly Premonition being my favorite video game, but I'd say right now it's Deadly Premonition. And I, I did a 100% let's, 100 let's play of the um, of the director's cut on PC. Yes, I got it working, mostly. There's some funny glitches. And it was what a geek's first time ex uh, experiencing the game. So you kind of get to see his evolution as a fan as you see him like, a little bit intrigued and then at some parts he doesn't seem to quite be feeling it and then by the end he's loving it by the end like we're so pumped for deadly premonition too we can't wait to let's play that um and then the the last the the last thing i i'd recommend right now just of things off the top of my head is uh kirby air ride where that was me brandon what geek we we're 100 percenting every in-game achievement in the city trial mode which was like our favorite mode growing up and so it's just three Three old friends playing Kirby Air Ride together, trying to get every achievement, having an awesome time, laughing and yelling at each other a lot. Like if you've seen the mini games on the Pokemon Stadium thing, like we do not take it seriously at all. We're having a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, we actually had one one guy come to the feedback channel on uh, on the Discord server, a link in the description, really concerned that like I was being mean to what geek and like all this stuff and like. They're like, I hope I'm not making a mountain out of a molehill. I just thought maybe it was a little bit rude. Maybe there needs to be an apology or something. And the person totally had good intention. Don't get me wrong. But like, I just respond by saying, dude, totally mountain out of molehill. Like, I don't think this registered as a blip on anyone's radar. Like, this is just three friends goofing around. But like, hey, if what a geek and Brandon uh, have any, like, if they had a problem with me or anything, like, they're on the server. They they can say it here. And like, we're all friends. And so I tagged them and. I, I think their immediate responses were like, yeah, I thought it was just us as three friends hanging out. <laughs> and one guy, would, and I saw a couple people getting mad about the latency. They're like, how could your latency as the player ever be as bad as the people online? To which Brandon responded with, uh, I, I think it was uh, I said in the video, like the delay on everything is bad. And Brandon's like, yeah, the delay on everything is bad on the N64. And I think even What a Geek said that. And then Brandon pointed out on Discord, like, Dude, the drowsy mini game was all timing, and I rocked the the drowsy mini game. So like, it couldn't just all be late. Like, it couldn't be that I have no latency and they have latency. It's that they have like a quarter a second of latency above the latency the mini game already had. So we all had to try and nail a timing that didn't look correct, which is why we all sucked at that mini game. Either than Brandon, by the way, what was with that? Why was he so good at that? I don't get it. I don't know if you guys have noticed from like the old Mario Party videos we did. We did a couple Mario Party videos back in the day. But for some reason, Brandon is really good at mini games. I don't know what it is. The the little stuff like that with like the grinding and the timing and like all of these little mechanics and stuff, he seems to just be really good at like 75% of mini games. He didn't get a single thing wrong on Clefairy Says, and that's a hard mini game. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I'm boiling to death in this room. I had my jacket on because welcome to Canada, and I thought, hey, it's a cold day out. The studio sometimes gets real, real hot. The studio is what I what I call this. It's a small bedroom I converted into a studio. You know, you can let me bring up my camera. You can see the background and all stuff. Oh, my hair looks so bad, doesn't it? It's so long in the sides. I guess I don't have as much of an excuse as most people to look so disheveled like this. I'm looking at myself in the monitor now um, because I I do my own hair and I do my own facial hair. The mustache is getting super big and the beard is getting too long. I haven't redyed my beard and my beard gets super orange and. 
And my hairline is apocalyptic, so I have a mohawk, but you can't even tell I have a mohawk right now because I haven't, the, the sides haven't been reshaped in so long and, er, and everything. So I, I know, I look a little bit disheveled. We all look a little bit disheveled right now. I've just been working a lot. If you excuse me, I gotta edit this. I gotta work more in a Pokemon challenge. It's it's Gen 5-1. I've been working on it for like over a month, just like a little bit here and there. I hope I can get it done soon because Gen 5 ones are very slow. Um, and I and I gotta record more Pokemon Stadium with the guys tonight. And then I gotta edit a bunch of Pokemon Stadium. I got so much to do. In reality, all I need to do is open that window because that window is what's keeping me from cooling off and making me sweat so bad. Which is yet another reason why I don't I don't need to be on a DSLR camera, do I? Do you guys really need to see me sweating? God, no. Oh my god, you do not need that. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys found it interesting. I hope that you guys have all commented down below because I love reading comments. It's, it's not just about the YouTube algorithm. That's... Although I love that joke and I'm happy you guys like that joke so much. Obviously, the comments help. But uh, the most important thing is I just really love reading comments, honestly. I, I guess I'm the reverse on YouTubers. A lot of YouTubers say, I'm totally interested in your comments just so that you'll comment. No, I tell you to comment and I'm like, it helps the channel. But in reality, I just really like reading comments. Is why I tell you to all follow me on Twitter. It barely helps me promote the show in any way. I don't even really use my Twitter to promote the show. I don't even like tell people I did most of my videos on Twitter. I just tell jokes, and jokes are more fun if other people tell jokes back with me, you know, if, like, people build on the joke with me. So I tell you, I, I promote my Twitter just so that you guys will tell jokes with me, because it's really fun. Anyway, uh, I've got to go get back to work. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.